talk of today will be based actually on uh, three different researches. First of all, two researches I've done in Gouda, my PhD research on Moroccan Dutch Muslim uh, youth. The second one um, is the so called Ethnobarometer project, which was a research project on the relationship between Muslims and non Muslims. It was a European project, um, and Dutch part was carried out in Gouda. Um, and the third research project is actually the one I'm uh, working on at this moment, is um, part of the, the research program Salafism as a Transmission Movement, focusing on um, what is usually referred to as the radical Muslims in the transnational uh, perspective. And um, all three researches I monitored the Dutch Islam debate we still monitor the Dutch Islam debate since uh, the year 2000. Okay. Um, on 28 August 2004, the Dutch daily newspaper NSA Homesblad reported about Yassi Ali's film Submission 1 in an article called New Provocation Yassi Ali. A new provocation because earlier she offended Muslims by comparing the Prophet Muhammad with a pedophile. The film was, according to her, a complaint against the abuse of Muslim women by Muslim men, legitimized or even incited to violence by the Quran. On 27 November 2007, the Dutch daily newspaper reported that, anti, that populist anti-Islam politician builders would make a provoking film. According then, to the newspaper, the film was to be a complaint against the Quran and parts of the Quran which displayed in quote unquote submission like style. The film would expose the evilness of the Quran according to Willis, a fascist book which incites believers to violence and hatred. Within these two movies, but also if, well, look on uh, YouTube, for example, other uh, similar movies. You can, uh, it is possible to, to distinguish a pattern prior and after the release of the films and also, for example, with regard to the Danish uh, cartoons. Um, I will treat them as sort of rituals. So the film itself is a ritualized <coughs> provocation, ritualized insult, but also the debates, particularly surrounding submission and fitna, um, as part of a sort of social drama, I think, is important and themes that are considered fundamental to Dutch society uh, appear. This is what I understand on the rituals and uh, social drama. Um, rituals I see as those exceptional ac actions with a particular performative regularity that serve to maintain, accommodate or mobilize deeply held sentiments, solidarities, values, and imageries on the basis of a symbolic and subjunctive orientation to what is and what should be. And uh, <coughs> I will try to, to refer to it, uh, back to it this uh, further on. Both films, Fitna and Submission, seem to work through a standard set of symbolic actions that can act or appear as such as igniting violence. These can be seen as rituals of provocation, defined by anthropologist Gabriel as codified procedures of deliberate disrespect, desecration, blasphemy, or violation of sacred or symbolically charged spaces, times, or objects, in which first a selection is made of uh, key symbols representing each community and as a second step, the means by which the symbols may be most effectively desecrated is chosen. Fitna and Submission and many similar films on the internet or the Danish cartoons contain images from the Prophet Muhammad, the Quran, and the position of women in Islam. The film Submission 1 by Ayan Yassi Ali um, 
film die, um, ja, yeah. it's a one way, so I showed images of an almost naked woman with Quranic verses painted on her body, attacking the perceived misogyny in Islam, in a particular Orientalist style. In Wilder's film, the Quran is targeted, and according to Wilder's, in the beginning, he, or in the beginning, he announced that the film would end with a particular depiction of the Prophet Muhammad, um, thereby exposing the uh, fascist and intolerant nature of the Quran. In their rhetoric, Wilders and his Ali have chosen, chosen to, hide, to use highly selective and often distorted narratives and representations about Muslims and Islam in Dutch society. In both cases, um, Islam, and in particular the Quran, is defined as a violence-prone discourse that creates a disposition for large-scale conflict and large-scale violence. In their analysis, they seem to rely on the assumption that discursive, discursive formations have their own logic and their own agency. And this results in the conclusion that people are continually produced and reproduced by discourses that form an essential part essential characteristic of their group and are the source for long-term dispositions, usually negative dispositions, such as resentment, arrogance, suspicion, intolerance with regard to outsiders. Positive dispositions are usually seen as a sign of integration. Yassi Ali and Wilders use particular symbols of Islam to justify courses of action in a way that is plausible to their audience. There are of course numerous ways to make such an argument and using the Quran in their visual political statement is therefore seen as a deliberate strategy to make their voice heard and to build up their own position as authoritative voices in the Islam debate. Their assumption is that the Quran is considered by many Muslims as the direct word of God and one of the most sacred traditions, written traditions they have. And to a certain extent, that is true. Even Muslims who are, as they say, not really practicing, um, show much respect and regard in the way they treat the book. And playing a Quran recitation can invoke strong emotions. This does not mean, however, that there is a direct relation between uh, Quran verses and the ideas and behavior of Muslims in general and of Muslim men in particular. Nevertheless, such argument has gained some credibility in the Dutch debates, given the particular discourse about Islam. Islam is not only perceived as the ultimate cultural other, but Islam as a cultural system, and sometimes Muslims as believers are also constructed as an immutable natural category. And such an essentialist discourse of Yassi Ali and Wilders can be seen as a form of political rhetoric that plays an important role in constituting social dramas. Political rhetoric follows certain culturally prescribed forms whose built-in logic makes the course of the argument predictable at the same time that it lends credence to the thesis advanced. It creates an emotional state that makes the message uncontestable um, because it is framed in such a way um, as to be seen as inherent in the way things are presents a picture of the world which is so emotionally compelling that it is beyond debate. We have seen this the last few weeks also in the debates, of course, about uh, the Muslim that shoots in Kharag, where people talk about no-go areas sending the army to Kharag and stating that the country is on fire. Um, in their particular focus on women and the Quran, or the Quran, the others in the Ali have resorted to a sort of homogenizing rhetoric that expresses, reinforces, and reproduces actually their own culturalist discourse and asserts it to be uh, natural and uh, self evident. With regard to um, um, submission, um, my colleague at Isim, one of the few actually who has written sort of content analysis um, of the film quite convincingly shows that the movie is based on uh, is in style based on Orientalism, both in the images um, that are used and the text. 
And with regard to the images, they show the Muslim women in the film with a transparent veil, according to Messi Ali, in order to show the person behind the veil. But at the same time, it taps into standard forms of Orientalist painting and popular presentation, representations of the erotic and exotic Arab or Muslim woman. Showing a naked woman to the audience who is at the same time veiled in combination with the use of a voiceover is, uh, is done in the submission hinders, hinders any form of identification with that woman except that of an oppressed Muslim woman, which of course is exactly what Hesia Ali meant to show given her agenda against domestic violence of Muslim men against Muslim women. She's not herself not very clear about whether or not the film was meant as a provocation. Um, you see in, uh, a good quote from her that was uh, in NSA Hammersblatt, the um, same weekend as the, the film was uh, released, um, showing that she actually appreciates the fact that it could be considered a provocation. Later on, she stated that she was actually quite sad that the newspaper considered her film as a provocation. Also in the film of Wilders, there is a specific and distorted selection of the Quran. And um, I'm not going to uh, uh, give you all of the uh, Quran verses that were used in the film, because otherwise I can take them two or three hours. Um, but let me give you this one. This is Surah 8, verses 60, and translated. Um, in the middle is the phrase to strike terror in Dutch terrorism. Where it should be, according to the most authoritative uh, uh, translations, terrify or frighten. Perhaps a minor detail, but given the context of the video, that, of the film that displays terrorism, this I don't think is, a really, is not really a minor mistake, but an attempt to sort of falsify maybe, but certainly create the idea that um, uh, the Quran calls for terrorism. The second part of the film is titled The Islamization of Society, referring to a situation in which Islam becomes dominant ideology and practice in society, leaving all others to minority status. Also in this part, selection and distortion based upon, in this case, newspaper headlines, is part and parcel of the rhetoric. I will so give you one example. Um, this headline about Hamas gathers in uh, Rotterdam um, was a, I don't know the exact date of the headline anymore, um, but it refers to a meeting of Palestine activists who at that time invited Prime Minister Haniyeh of the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority at that time was in the hands of Hamas after they won the democratic elections. Suggestion, of course, is that such a terrorist organization as Hamas can freely gather in Rotterdam. However, Dinge came. The visa for Prime Minister Haniyeh was refused by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, rendering actually the complete headline obsolete. After the evocative images of the Quran and the surrender uh, of Dutch society to Islam, the film ends with a particular picture representing the Prophet Muhammad. The picture, one, one of the most controversial pictures of Danish cartoons, representing the Prophet Muhammad <coughs> uh, in, in, with a, with a uh, turban as a bomb. This time in this film, the bomb is ignited, and in the subsequent scene, there is lightning, which is suggesting that. Explodes. After these scenes, we see the Quran again with a hand suggesting that the page is torn from the book. By choosing the key symbols, um, the political entrepreneurs such as Wilders try to reduce actually the multi-dimensionality multi of relations by making one dimension, in this case religion, appear all important, all important and all encompassing. The visual character of much of the modern mass media is important in understanding the use of film for distributing one's message. And to a certain extent signifies the trend 
in which politics and uh, public debate is not only about verbal arguments anymore, but also about visual narrative representations. Short films such as Submission and Fitna, but also, for example, the Danish cartoons, use images as a tool for manipulation and as an apparently autonomous source of their own uh, purposes and their own meanings. The rhetoric of the violent and dangerous messages in the Quran, the character of the Prophet, the mapping of the almost visible, uh, the visible, almost naked body of a woman in the Quran verses painted on her body, constitute the visual narrative through which the other is recognized, represented, and reproduced. The images are used to present the message about the violence and pronage of Islam, in particular <coughs> the Quran. Also, the images connect the rhetoric of Bilas and Hassi Ali with the larger narratives, uh, more global narratives about Islam. Of course, these visual messages are not the only messages. People like Wilders or Yassi Ali have. Um, for example, statements from Wilders such as Muslims should tear out half of the Quran and calling women who wear burqas uh, penguins uh, can be considered sound bites. Sound bites are easily to remember, easily to repeat, and make nice headlines and easy quotes for television news and are therefore very powerful uh, in conveying these messages. Well, the images of the Quran, terrorist attacks, uh, headlines, a woman with Quranic verses, are, can be considered image bites, having similar persuasive um, effects as sound bites from viewers and their political understandings. And in particular, this is particularly the case as uh, American research shows with negative, compelling images that elicit danger, fear, or disgust. As I said earlier, the, by making these movies, um, these politicians also try to build up their status as an authoritative spokesperson for the Dutch community, for part of the Dutch community. Um, this position or this status is far from uncontested, of course. Neither is the content nor the style of the political propaganda. There are many politicians, many opinion leaders, and others who oppose the submission in Vietnam some in content and style, most of them only in style, as I will argue later. Um, there are also people who defended submission in Vietnam, although they were against the content or style of both films. What is, most of the time, with a few exceptions in politics and media, not contested, is that Islam and Muslims are the main topics at this moment for political debate, and are very important issues that have to be solved in order to bring a good society. This process obscures the fact that there may be other fundamental issues involved as well. Um, Yassi Ali and Builder's ritual of provocation or antagonism, antagonism targeting particular key symbols of a specific category of people legitimates and perpetuates certain political paradigms by what is called the mobilization of bias, by focusing the attention of people, focusing the attention in the debates on one issue, thereby obscuring other uh, issues. And in order to understand that, we should not stop at an analysis of the film itself. We should have, uh, have a broader look. have had the same impact as submission and fitna, but did not have the same impact. One example was the distribution of uh, the so-called band Frank um, postcards picturing our fan with a kefia. Kefia is a Palestinian um, scar, which actually only caused minor debate, although um, after complaints by an Israeli Jewish lobby group, um, the, 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 the distributor sees the production and dissemination of the postcards. This is the postcards. It's disseminated by Boomerang, probably well known by its free uh, postcards. And um, it was 
uh, taken out of the distribution um, after complaints of the uh, CD that it is offensive to combine the symbol of the Holocaust with the symbol of the Palestinian uh, struggle. There was no debate about freedom of speech here whatsoever. Another issue, I leave really the left one on the side of this book, <coughs> focus on the right one, Tripti, um, showing the national tricolor with the word jihad in the middle there. One of these flags at the exhibition was taken down by, um, according to the newspapers, a drunken student who took offense at the combination of the Dutch flag and the word jihad. He was taken to court for disorderliness in the street and uh, questions were asked in Parliament. And this question actually amounted to uh, um, members of Parliament asking the minister um, if it wouldn't be uh, a wise thing to in the future be more, more tough on people who vandalize and desperate uh, things. The comment about vandalizing was not made pertaining to the student, but to the artist who made the flag with the word uh, jihad. Also in the newspapers, um, he was uh, given quite a lot of support, and the Dutch Radio uh, Vereniging, the, let's say the supporters of the monarchy, um, actually offered to pay uh, every whatever fine he had to pay for this. In neither case, the, the content and the style of the debates match the debates about fitna and submission. There were a few debates that could did come remotely uh, close, and that were the debates about blasphemy, I will talk to that about that a little bit more later. And um, in particular, one surrounding the concert of Madonna in um, the Amsterdam Arena. Um, the Youth of Association of SKP, which can be considered an orthodox right-wing uh, Christian party, objected against the, the concert in which Madonna performed this mock uh, crucifixion. According to Madonna, this mock crucifixion is a means to appeal to the audience to, do, to donate to AIDS charities. I have a little bit of a problem making a link between this mock crucifixion and AIDS, but that's not the question. The youth chapter filed a legal complaint uh, against Madonna for blasphemy and insulting a religious group, which they lost to. And as a protest, they started a praying session at the Amsterdam Arena, where the concert was, uh, was held. There's not much research done between uh, searching for, for the differences and the similarities between these, uh, these events. Um, a little tentative, I would say that the similarity lay in a part, particular part of the framing, the freedom of speech, and the, exp uh, uh, the fact that freedom of speech and freedom of expression is under threat because of the irrational sensibilities of religious people and their re-emergence in the public sphere. The difference, of course, between the Christian affair and the films is, however, also clear. While many newspapers announced the Madonna concert uh, and the fact that Christians took offense, both Fitna, fitna and uh, Submission were announced as provocations. Announcing a film as a provocation can be seen as, an, as actually the opening statement of the social drama. And in order for rituals, uh, in this case the films, to work, they have to tap into deeply felt issues among people and the makers therefore have to be aware of their audience. It must resonate among the audience, it must create, it must galvanize different social solidarities and they have to be active and participate in the ritual. Part of these audience, audiences are, in this case, other politicians and the media. And certainly in the case of FITNA, um, politicians felt compelled and obliged to respond. And in this case, within the media, the stating that the film is a provocation is a, a 
performative act. First of all, it means expressing and offering a particular kind of solidarity, in this case with Muslims who might feel offended by the separation of their holy traditions, and against a confrontational, instead of constructive, style of politics. Second, it means expressing and confirming the fear that Muslims will be offended and in the Netherlands or in the Middle East will resort to violent acts against Dutch people and Dutch institutions, as indeed some Muslims did during the Katrina affair against the Danish institutions. In both cases, both Fidla and Submission, the film was framed as a breach in a consensual style of politics and a strategy endangering the cohesion in society because the government politicians feared it would be disrespectful towards Muslims. In the case of Fidna, it was also perceived as possibly threatening Dutch interests abroad because something similar to the Danish cartoon affair might be the result. After the announcement, of course, um, the, the course of events took different turns for submission and Fidna. One of the reasons is that submission was aired the day after it was announced, while it took months before Fidna was released after the announcement in 2000, November 2007. In particular, submission was very well timed since it was released two days before the long-awaited debate about a parliamentary inquiry on the Dutch integration policies, and integration at that time was part of the responsibilities of uh, Hassi Ali in uh, her party. In between September uh, 2004 and in, or in, in September 2004 and October 2004, there were more than 187 articles in the larger national and regional newspapers about her in the film. Many of the opinion articles and common, uh, commentaries lauded Hesse Ali for her braveness to criticize Islam, uh, while Muslim organizations criticized the film, stated that they were offended, and uh, although they called upon people to remain calm, they feared that repercussions from radical Muslims would follow. There were serious death threats against the lives of both Yassi Ali and film director Thierry Verbrock, and most of the criticism uh, referred to the use of a naked woman with Quran verses on her body and connecting the Quran with domestic violence that would uh, hurt the feelings of Muslims. As I said earlier, almost no criticism was referred to the basic essentialist assumptions in the orientalist style uh, of the film. With few exceptions, uh, in a lot of cases the form was, con was partly contested and uh, the content, yeah, the form was partly contested and the content was not contested. Um, if it had not been for a particular event, of course, submission would However, probably be only just one of the series of incidents, events, and affairs that put Muslims in the spotlight. But on 2 November 2004, Mohammed Bouyeri killed Theo Van Gogh by shooting him and cutting his throat. He left the scene after planting a knife in his chest with a letter containing a message for the SDR. In the month after the murder, um, Numerous television programs called Submission the Reason for the Murder, and the main national and regional newspapers had more than 500 articles about Hesse Ali, Submission, and the Murder. In this discussion, uh, four perspectives can be uh, identified. The, the murder was seen as an attack on uh, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Was part, the murder was part of the, the clash of civilizations, the murder was part of the war on terror and the holy war, and the murder was an example of failed integration. The same four frames can be uh, discovered in the debates about uh, fitna. And the question that was raised often was whether in the film the Quran will be publicly uh, desecrated by tearing it up, as uh, builders once suggested Muslims should do or by burning it. The ministers of the interior and the minister of justice warned builders for possible repercussions in the Netherlands and worldwide and personal risks for him. A letter was sent by the government to all mayors asking them to be extra alert to possible tensions 
Police forces in several cities feared unrest when the film would be released. Dutch Prime Minister Volker and his spoke of, I quote, a crisis situation, and Dutch embassies were issued to take precautionary measures to protect their personnel and Dutch citizens. Considerable attention was given in the Dutch media to Syria's Grand Mufti, Ahmad Badr al-Din Hassoun, who said during his visit to the European Parliament that if Willis uh, tears up or burns a Quran in his film, he will be responsible for wars and bloodshed. Um, the organization Hizbut Tahrir launched a campaign against uh, 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 Willis's insults against Islam and demanded it to be stopped. Websites were launched either against Willis and the film or in support of him. Statements defending about free freedom of speech were made on several websites and in letters to the editors in the newspapers and also an anti willis campaign was launched uh, by Nuclear Terrorista stating that Willis is evil, has to be stopped and he accused him of diminishing the social cohesion in society. Although it is, certainly when you look at all that, it's quite understandable that these events and, and all the big, a lot of media attention um, however, among many of the Moroccan Dutch youth, and also among the more radical Muslims at this moment, the general pattern is not to seek the confrontation with Dutch society, but actually to avoid confrontation, to shy away from confrontation with politicians. That, however, was completely disregarded in most of the accounts by politicians and in the media actually resulting in creating Muslim anger as an undisputed fact. Talking about a crisis situation is also, just as talking about a provocative film, a performative action and means in fact creating that situation, in particular because of the hidden references to angry Muslims and earlier events such as Submission 1, the Murality of Morocco and the Cartoon Affair. If, however, the, the, the whole thing leading up to the cartoon affair can learn something to us, it's the unpredictability and contingency of the chain of events that might lead up to violence. Part, or even the goal of the ritual of provocation is, actually, is the creation and reproduction of the ultimate other by putting the blame for all reactions against the provocations on the targets of that same provocation. In this case, Behind all the talks about security measures, crisis situations, and so on, is, um, is, is the picture of an angry, irrational, fanatical Muslim who overreacts against insults and provocations and thereby threatens the right of freedom of expression and Dutch tolerance. This makes the current hype a dangerous one, or the, not the current hype, but the hype we saw, but also the current hype, but particularly in this case, the hype around Fitna, um, showing that rumors and suspicions about provocations are just as part of the whole chain of events as the movie itself. Although the views of Wilders uh, and his practices are not endorsed by most other political groups and media in the Netherlands, by displaying their fears openly, they become participants in the chain of events and actually serve the message of Fitna even before it was released. In the case of submission, it was the murder of Van Gogh that created a mounting crisis in the direction of a major dichotomous cleavage. In the case of Fitna, the announcement of the film alone was enough to create a sense of crisis because submission and the cartoon affair had already proven how sensitive Muslims were <coughs> and how easily they could resort to violence. This way, and also by ignoring um, uh, the, the, the trend among, among, among the majority of Muslims who shy away from uh, provocations or confrontations, uh, Muslim dissent is created as something that is self-evident and that there is, and little seems necessary to trigger their rage. Both the films and the debates before and after the release invoke and reaffirm moral boundaries and idealize norms of behaviors. And they are rituals with regard to the separation, 
demarcation and classification of groups by invoking, invoking reaffirming and validating social boundaries that are, uh, that are held to be of great value. Immediately after uh, submission one, um, the murder of Theo van Gogh and the announcement of Fitna, attempts were made to redress the situation into a more integrative and more constructive uh, ritual. Public meetings and solidarity demonstrations were held after the murder of Van Gogh. Muslim organizations and networks issued their own statements condemning the murder of Van Gogh. And after the announcement of Fitna, meetings were held with local, uh, with local mosques. Particular churches, many of them having a long standing relationship with Muslim spokespersons, were very active in expressing their solidarity with Muslims. Although there were individual priests who supported the brothers publicly, in general, most Protestant churches and the Catholic Church were opposed at least to the strategy and style of confrontation. In the case of submission and the murder of Van Gogh, many of these solidarity actions were counted by us. For example, Minister Padong stated in the television program Weiterhof that Muslims have, I quote, a lower resilience than Dutch people, including religious Dutch people, end quote. She made this statement after the Minister of Justice Dorn had announced that he was thinking of reviving the article in Dutch law that prohibits scornful blasphemy and to actively enforce uh, this part of the law. The Dutch government, in particular the Christian Democrats, after the murder of Van Gogh and during the, the debate uh, about Fitna, um, have tried to revitalize the blasphemy article. And the issue of blasphemy, I think, is a very interesting and very relevant aspect, aspect in this case because it actually made clear that there's another thing uh, that plays an important role uh, besides the antagonism between Muslims and non Muslims. Um, and that is the issues pertaining to the relationship between the secular and the religious in the public sphere. Let's go into a little deeper on what Dutch secularism actually is and, and the history of uh, blasphemy before returning to, uh, to the films. Dutch secularism is mainly based on, on the issues that play between the Dutch states and several uh, Dutch Christian denominations during several centuries. And the question of how much difference can be allowed without compromising the need for social cohesion was always an important underlying principle in the conflict between the state and church. The Dutch state had a very strong position in this development, but it was never a one way street in which the state could decide over the churches without consulting them and take their concerns into account. On the other hand, also the churches were not completely autonomous, not even in the uh, uh, often referred to uh, pillarized society. Um, the Dutch society was divided in Christian, Catholic and uh, also socialist um, pillar. This pillarization does not, as James Kennedy has made clear, does not only allow for a certain degree of autonomy, but it also, in fact, enabled the state to closely monitor and regulate what religious groups were doing and to set the parameters for their continuing participation in public life. The result was not a complete ban of religion, of religion from the public sphere, such as, to a certain extent, in France, but a sort of politics of containment of religious differences. Uh, by the state helping to define religious subcultures with their own organizations and Elites. After the 1960s, when the Netherlands became a more secularized country in the sense that people were less affiliated with church denominations and the social influence of the churches decreased, the debates have shifted towards the question of how to deal with Christian groups that do not acknowledge and accept the fundamental freedoms of a secular Dutch society. For example, several Christian groups refuse to vaccinate their children against polio or in case of the SKP. Um, that refuse, refuses or refused women to become active members of their political party. The way these questions were resolved did not really question the tolerance of Dutch society. On the, on the contrary, it was seen as an affirmation of Dutch tolerance. 
more serious questions were raised during the 1990s when the issue of tolerance was linked to immigration and Muslims. And after 9-11 and the murder of Van Gogh, the government took up counter-radicalization policies and tries to support a more liberal Islam. And this is combined with an effort on part of the Dutch government to find a way to protect Muslims from discrimination and acts of deliberate disrespect. And in this case, the law of blasphemy plays, uh, plays an important role. And it's interesting to note that in a report in 2006, the Dutch Council, Scientific Council for Government Policy issued a report claiming that religion was back into the public sphere. I have some doubts about that, but let's say that's true. And the same can be said for blasphemy. And this becomes clear, for example, when we look at the number of newspaper articles published on this issue. Between 1919 and 2 and November 2024, little over than a thousand articles were published on uh, blasphemy. In the last four years, more than 2,600 articles uh, were published, and in particular in the first six months after uh, both of the films. And over the years, the issue of blasphemy has been subject to changes, reflecting the wider changes in society. Heresy and blasphemy often taken together, although it's not there is a distinction between the two, was for a long time part of the laws in the Netherlands. And during the 19th century it was removed, but actually quite soon there were voices in particular from the Dutch Reformed Church uh, with pleas to uh, reintroducing it. The accusation of heresy or blasphemy initially pertained to offending the honor of God. In the early modern period, this shifts from protection from the honor of God to the protection of religion, institutionalized religion. It was strongly uh, connected with the conviction that there was only one Christian truth and that it was necessary to remain united because this integration of the Christian religion would mean a loss of social cohesion. But in a plural society where people with different religions having an equal status, this no longer applies. And what is protected nowadays is the individual uh, religious beliefs and thoughts, not the religious doctrines of God. What is also compared to the pre-modern times is a concern with offending and religious uh, offending religious and worldview convictions. These changes in blasphemy um, are an example of the fact that the boundaries between the religious and the secular change, and also the nature of the religious and the secular change, as does blasphemy and free speech. Uh, it's both an expression and, and a result of uh, these changes in society. <clears throat> what also matters here uh, with regard to blasphemy is that also in the case of blasphemy, Accusing the act of accusing people of blasphemy or defamation or sacrilege or infringing free speech is a performative act. In his major overview of blasphemous art, Brent Plate um, makes clear and actually quite literally shows that the act of accusing within a particular context evocates the profound power of blasphemy. No picture, no text, no film is blasphemous by nature, but categorized as blasphemous within a particular cultural, historical, and political context. And the accusation of blasphemy is therefore the performative action that in fact creates blasphemy. Now, let's go back to the film. The Christian Democratic Minister of Justice has sought for a way to include other religious denominations and non-religious <coughs> world views as well in a new <coughs> revitalized article of blasphemy. A letter about this, however, leaks out and the minister was forced to withdraw it. The majority of the Dutch parliament wants to abolish the law and was, uh, as was clear in the debate that followed, which actually confirmed this, the prior debate not long after the murder of Theo Hogar. In fact, the majority of Dutch parliament wants wanted to abolish all anti-discrimination laws that specifically protect religious people. 
For most political parties and many secular opinion leaders, the law on blasphemy is a violation of free speech because it means possible censorship on public debates about religion that does not fit anymore in contemporary Dutch society that has loosened itself from the burden of religion, as some say. It is in particular um, the VVD, the progressive liberals of Desert the left wing parties, and the PVV, the party of the Builders, that try to abolish the blasphemy laws. The Christian parties try, of course, to maintain or even revitalize the law. Since two Christian parties are part of the government together with the Social Democrats, we could argue, of course, that the other parties are merely arguing out of opportunistic reasons in their opposition to this government. I think, however, that we are dealing with a much more fundamental issue here, and that is the constant renegotiation between the secular and the religious in society. Using blasphemous images can be seen as a radical political contestation, contestation attempting to change the religious status quo. But also religious movements can use the accusation of blasphemy to mobilize their own constituency, create unity, and immunize their faith from attacks from the outside. It is feared by some politicians and opinion leaders that the presence of Christian parties, including one small orthodox party, in government will lead to an end of secular freedoms, and not only the freedom of speech. The major attention for Muslims in cases of free speech blinds the fact, therefore, that the issue does not only pertain to Muslims versus Dutch people, but is an important fault line in society in general. Also, while in other cases, such as the Dutch flag with the word jihad, there has also been a restriction of the freedom of speech which is neglected, while it does play a role in the case of religious people, makes the categorization of religious people of, as people who are uh, opposing the liberal freedoms almost as a matter of fact. The film Submission and Fitna can be seen as, therefore, as transgressive in a double manner. Not only in the sense that they attack particular core symbols of Muslims, but also because they cross the boundaries between the secular and the religious and challenge the existing status quo in society between secular and religious. For secular politicians and opinion leaders, it is a way to resolve the contradictions in Dutch society in which religious groups still have, still have a strong position. And their emphasis on freedom of speech in cases when religious people are offended, while obscuring other cases, serves as a way to invoke and naturalize the boundary between secular and religious. Although there have been joint statements by Muslim organizations and churches condemning both the films and the murder of the war, and there have been attempts by some Muslims to prosecute builders for spreading hate and so on, another aspect, and I referred to it already, um, has also been what one would call shyness and confusion. Many of the organizations and also individual Muslims expressed, usually among themselves, that they did not know how to respond to the situation. Most of the organizations urged people to remain quiet. After the release of Fitna, Muslims were praised by both Prime Minister Balkenende and Wilders for their calm reaction, meaning that they did not resort to violence. That's actually quite interesting. We see that some opinion leaders, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, saw the calm reaction of Muslims as a sign of emancipation and a revitalization of the Dutch Holder Law. Muslims have grown accustomed to the insults and have found a way to endure them. This is a statement made by Hassi Ali in the Volkskamp. Um, without asking provoking questions, we could never have accomplished this. That it is the end of calm reactions and also Muslims distancing themselves from radicals. Also, in the case of the Danish cartoons, there were, as anthropologist Talal Assad makes clear, reactions that it was actually a good thing people felt hurt because that would lead to a situation in which they could re-examine their beliefs and therefore criticizing and offending 
questionable religious thoughts then becomes a form of liberating speech necessary to free Muslims and subsequently also society. Such comments can be seen as displays of feeling of superiority. And rather than being emancipation, I think the common reactions are the result of a process we also see in ritualized racial insults. The insult, provocation, or criticism is a form of ritual, is a ritual form of teaching a group subordination by way of humiliation. It's more or less saying, this is the way uh, we do it, we can insult you, and if you react, then you're not part of us. It not only expresses and reproduces the desired social order, but also reproduces and legitimizes the hierarchy between Muslims and non-Muslims, and is a form of including individual Muslims in the group as long as they meet certain criteria that are determined by the dominant groups. And now, in order to reach a conclusion, analyzing events in modern societies in terms of rituals is, an, I think, an adequate way to discover how societies try to maintain their social cohesion in time of major changes. Releasing offending and provocative films is a means to express, legitimize, and naturalize elements of the social order that are deemed fundamental in the discourses about how a society, how, how a society is and how a society should be in times when these exact elements are perceived as being threatened. Using a distorted, one-sided, and sometimes even false vision about Islam and disseminating this by film is an attempt by politicians to express and legitimize the boundaries and categories in society by a similar set of adversarial rituals, creating and expressing and validating an opposition between the self and a dangerous, irrational, foreign, and violent other. These rituals recreate they, and organize particular representations, such as the secular, the Western, and so on, the Dutch, while it delegitimizes and obscures other representations, such as the angry Muslim or the, the uh, fault line between secular and religious in society. And in this case, the issue of blasphemy is an important constituent factor. The changes, also I didn't mention it, but the changes in religiosity among Christians also moving towards a much more individualized and experiential form of religion actually finds its parallel in the blasphemy law and practices where more emphasis is put on offending Muslims and um, uh, protecting people protecting people's personal feelings and beliefs. On the part of the religious group, it can be seen as an attempt to block the transgression from the side of the secular politicians and opinion leaders and on part of um, uh, the secular politicians using blasphemous images and trying to remove the blasphemy laws in order to protect the freedom of speech is an attempt to, as they see it, liberate people from their backward beliefs and practices and subordinate people into a secular liberal political rule. Looking closer at the issue of blasphemy and free speech, I think makes clear that the constant renegotiation between the religious and the secular does not only pertain to Muslims, but is a more fundamental fault line within Dutch society. And to a certain extent, the conflict uh, surrounding fitna and submission uh, is only a, a proxy coming from a situation where, after years of having less political influences, influence, two Christian political parties are now part of the government. This, of course, is not to say that Islam and Muslims are irrelevant at all in this case. Both films tap into the wide, widely spread cultural essentialist discourse about Muslims who seem to be governed by their religion and who are supposedly not easy to control and to integrate in society. Both politicians um, and opinion leaders opposing builders and, and his army and those who support him willingly or unwillingly supported and expressed the discourse in the debate and reproduced it in their practices. They both spread the ideas of Muslims not yet fully integrated into a culture of freedom, equality and tolerance. The difference is mainly one of style. While one party tries to integrate and subordinate them 
by humiliation, provocation, and offending people, the other tries to pull them into their society. But both, both make clear who has the power to decide what criteria are applied for integration.